Hidden deep in the forested hills of rural Pennsylvania stood Coldwater Penitentiary, a relic of another time. The prison, long abandoned, had once been a place where the worst of the worst were sent to rot. Built in the late 1800s it was notorious for its brutal conditions and the dark rumors that swirled around it. Prisoners spoke of unexplained deaths, cruel experiments, and something darker that seemed to linger in the walls of the place. By the 1950s, cold water had been shut down, its doors locked, its history forgotten by most. But some places don't stay buried. In the decades since its closure, stories began to circulate again, stories of strange lights in the empty windows, of eerie screams that echoed through the night, and of figures moving behind the rusted bars. Local teenagers would dare each other to venture onto the grounds, but no one stayed long. The air around cold water was thick with something sinister, something that kept even the most curious at bay. For decades, the prison stood silent, a crumbling monument to the horrors it had once contained. That is, until a group of paranormal investigators, eager for fame and recognition, decided to document their experiences inside the infamous Coldwater Penitentiary. They were drawn by the rumors, the whispers of ghostly prisoners still trapped within its walls, and the tales of guards who had gone mad after witnessing unspeakable horrors. They were looking for proof of the afterlife. What they found was far worse. The group consisted of five members, each with their own reasons for wanting to explore the paranormal. There was Travis, a leader, seasoned investigator who had spent years chasing shadows in haunted houses and forgotten cemeteries. His obsession with the supernatural had grown since the death of his sister, and he was determined to prove that ghosts were real. Kara, his girlfriend, was a skeptic, but she enjoyed the thrill of the hunt. She believed that most hauntings could be explained away by science or psychology, but she had agreed to join the team out of a desire to support Travis. Lucas was the tech expert. He had spent the last few years building custom ghost hunting equipment, including motion detectors, thermal cameras, and EVP, electronic voice phenomena, recorders. He was excited to try out his new gear in a place as notorious as cold water. Maya, a psychic medium, had always been sensitive to spirits. She had been part of the group for a few months, but she was reluctant to visit Coldwater. The moment Travis mentioned the place, she felt a heavy weight pressing down on her chest, a warning, perhaps. But she pushed it aside, telling herself that it was just nerves. And finally, there was Jake, the documentarian. He had been brought on to film their investigation, hoping to capture evidence of the paranormal for a documentary series they were producing. Jake didn't believe in ghosts, but he believed in a good story, and Coldwater was brimming with potential. The five of them set out early one Saturday morning, driving through the winding forest roads that led to the prison. The sky was overcast, casting a gray pall over the landscape, and by the time they reached the gates of cold water, a sense of unease had settled over the group. The prison loomed ahead of them, its towering stone walls cracked and covered in ivy. Rusted barbed wire curled along the top of the walls, and the main gate hung open, creaking softly in the wind. The air smelled of damp earth and decay, and a thick fog clung to the ground, swirling around their feet as they stepped out of the car. Wow, Jake muttered, lifting his camera to film the exterior of the prison. This place is even creepier than I imagined. Maya shuddered, pulling her jacket tighter around her shoulders. There's something wrong here, she whispered. I can feel it. Travis smiled, though there was a nervous edge to his voice. That's what we're here for, right? To find out what's going on. Kara glanced at the dark windows of the prison, her arms crossed. Let's just get this over with. The sooner we start, the sooner we can leave. Lucas was already unloading the equipment from the van, excitement gleaming in his eyes. This place is perfect. If there are spirits here, we'll catch them. None of them noticed the way the fog seemed to cling to the walls of the prison, or how the shadows inside the windows seemed to shift, watching them with an almost predatory intent. The group entered through the main gate, stepping into the massive courtyard where prisoners had once milled about during their brief moments of daylight. The silence was oppressive, the only sound the echo of their footsteps on the cracked concrete. The air was thick with moisture, and the chill in the air seemed to seep into their bones. The main cell blocks were in disrepair, rows of rusted bars and crumbling walls stretching out in every direction. Moss and ivy had overtaken much of the structure, and graffiti from past trespassers marred the walls. The place smelled of mildew, rot, and something else, something metallic, like blood. Maya winced as they walked through the corridor leading to the solitary confinement cells. I don't like this, she murmured. There's so much anger here. Pain. Kara rolled her eyes. That's probably because it's a prison. People were locked up here for years. It's not going to feel like a day at the beach. Travis, ever the optimist, grinned and patted Maya's shoulder. 
Exactly. If we're going to get any readings, it's going to be here. Let's set up the gear. They began by placing motion sensors and EMF detectors in the cell blocks, hoping to capture any signs of movement or fluctuations in the electromagnetic field. Lucas set up his thermal camera to scan for cold spots, while Jake followed them with his handheld camera, documenting every step of the investigation. But it wasn't until they reached the asylum wing, the part of the prison where the most violent and disturbed inmates had been kept, that things started to go wrong. The asylum wing had been the heart of Coldwater's darkest rumors. It was said that the prison had conducted experiments on the prisoners here, using them as unwilling subjects for cruel psychological and medical trials. Many had died in agony, their minds shattered by the horrors they endured. As they stepped into the wing, Maya froze. Her face went pale, and she clutched her head, her breath coming in short gasps. Maya? Travis asked, concern in his voice. What's wrong? She didn't answer at first, her eyes wide with terror as she stared down the long hallway lined with padded cells. There are so many of them, she whispered. They're still here. They never left. Travis frowned. Ooh. Maya shook her head, tears welling in her eyes. The prisoners. They're trapped. They're angry. Suddenly the lights on the EMF detector spiked, flashing wildly. Lucas glanced at the device, his brow furrowed. That's a strong reading. Something's close. Kara stepped forward, her flashlight beam cutting through the darkness. It's probably faulty wiring, this place is falling apart. But before she could finish, the motion sensor at the end of the hallway beeped, its red light flashing. Everyone turned to look. There was no one there. Jake swung his camera toward the sensor, filming the empty hallway. Is that supposed to happen? He asked, his voice shaking. Lucas frowned, checking the readings on his thermal camera. It's picking up something. A cold spot. Just by the last cell. Travis grinned, though the excitement in his eyes had given way to nervous energy. We've got activity, people. Let's check it out. Maya didn't move. We shouldn't be here, she whispered. Her voice barely audible. They don't want us here. Travis, Kara, and Lucas moved down the hallway toward the motion sensor, their flashlights casting long shadows on the walls. The air was colder now, almost unnaturally so, every step they took seemed to echo louder than it should have. Jake followed close behind, his camera trained on the end of the hall where the sensor had gone off. He kept glancing at the small screen, expecting to see something, anything, move in the darkness. But the hallway remained still. As they approached the last cell, Lucas stopped, his face pale as he looked at the thermal camera screen. What is it? Kara asked, shining her flashlight toward the cell. There's a figure, Lucas said, his voice trembling. It's cold, but it's shaped like a person. Travis stepped forward, peering into the cell through the rusted bars. His flashlight flickered for a moment, and for the briefest second, he thought he saw something, just the outline of a figure, standing in the far corner of the cell, watching him. He blinked, and the figure was gone. I saw something, he whispered, stepping back. There was someone in there. Jake aimed his camera into the cell, his hand shaking slightly. I didn't see anything. Maya, who had stayed behind at the entrance of the wing, suddenly let out a sharp gasp, touching her head again. They're coming, she whispered, her voice filled with panic. They're all coming. Before anyone could respond, the lights in the hallway flickered and went out. The darkness was sudden, complete, and suffocating. The air around them seemed to thicken, growing colder by the second. For a moment, no one moved. Then, from the depths of the asylum wing, a low, guttural moan echoed through the halls, a sound filled with agony and rage. Kara's breath caught in her throat. What the hell was that? Travis shined his flashlight around, but the beam flickered weakly, barely piercing the darkness. Lucas, get the equipment back online. But Lucas wasn't listening. His eyes were fixed on the thermal camera, his face white as a sheet. There's something coming, he whispered. It's everywhere. Suddenly, the motion sensors began beeping wildly, one after the other, as if something, or many things, were moving through the hallway toward them. Maya's voice trembled, tears streaming down her face. They're angry. They want us to leave. The moaning grew louder, closer, and with it came the sound of footsteps, slow, shuffling footsteps, echoing off the walls of the asylum wing. Travis turned, his heart pounding in his chest. We need to get out of here. Now. But before they could move, the shadows shifted. From the cells, figures emerged. Dark, twisted shapes that moved with unnatural speed. 
their forms flickering in and out of the dim light like they were made of smoke and shadows. Jake let out a strangled cry, backing away, his camera still rolling as he tried to capture the figures on film. But no matter where he pointed the lens, the shadows seemed to evade it, slipping just out of view. They're coming. Maya screamed, her voice filled with terror. They're coming for us. Panic set in as the group fled the asylum wing, their footsteps echoing down the crumbling hallways as they ran. The shadows pursued them, their shapes flickering in and out of existence, closing in from all sides. The moaning and shuffling grew louder, like the sound of an entire prison filled with the damned rising to claim them. Travis led the group, his flashlight barely illuminating the path ahead. Behind him, Jake struggled to keep up, his camera bouncing wildly in his hands. Lucas and Kara followed their faces pale with fear. Maya brought up the rear, breath coming in short, ragged gasped as she clutched her chest. We need to get out of here! Kara shouted, glancing over her shoulder at the shifting shadows. The main gate! Travis called back. We can make it! But as they neared the exit, a deafening crash echoed through the prison, followed by the sound of heavy iron doors slamming shut. The shadows grew thicker, closing in around them, their forms taking on more defined shapes, twisted grotesque figures with hollow eyes and gaping mouths. Travis skidded to a stop at the main gate, only to find it sealed shut. What the hell? He muttered, his hands frantically tugging at the rusted bars. It was open when we came in. Behind him, the shadows crept closer, their ghostly forms swaying as they moved. They're not letting us leave, Maya whispered, her voice barely audible. They're trapping us here. The air grew colder, and the walls of the prison seemed to vibrate with an unnatural energy. The figures reached out with shadowy hands, their whispers filling the air, distorted and agonizing. Lucas dropped to his knees, clutching the thermal camera to his chest as he stared at the screen. They're all around us. We're surrounded. Jake, still filming, stumbled back, his heart pounding in his chest. He could feel the cold breath of the shadows on the back of his neck, could hear the faint, raspy whispers in his ear. They're real, he whispered, his voice filled with disbelief. They're actually real. Travis slammed his fists against the gate, his mind racing. There has to be another way out. A window, a door, or something. Suddenly, a low, guttural growl echoed through the air, louder than the whispers, louder than the moaning. It was the sound of something far more malevolent than the spirits of the prisoners, something ancient, something evil. Maya's eyes widened in horror. It's here. Before anyone could react, the shadows surged forward, enveloping them in a wave of darkness. Cold hands reached out, pulling at their clothes, their skin. The air was filled with the sound of screams, some their own, some belonging to the damned souls trapped within cold water's walls. Travis felt the ground shift beneath his feet, as if the prison itself was alive, pulling them down into the darkness. The shadows clawed at him, whispering in his ears, filling his mind with images of pain, suffering, and death. We need to move! Kara shouted, grabbing his arm and pulling him toward one of the side doors. There's got to be another way out. They stumbled through the side door into another corridor that led deeper into the prison. The shadows followed, relentless their twisted forms flickering in and out of the walls. This way, Travis shouted, leading them toward the prison's infirmary, a part of the building that had been used to house the sick and injured inmates. The walls were covered in graffiti, and the air smelled of decay and death. But as they entered the infirmary, they realized they had made a terrible mistake. The room was filled with broken gurneys, rusted medical equipment, and bloodstained walls. The shadows were thicker here and forms more solid, more defined and in the center of the room, strapped to a gurney, was a figure. At first, they thought it was another ghost, another twisted shadow of the past. But as they approached, they realized with horror that it was something far worse. The figure was human, or had once been human. Its skin was pale and stretched tightly over its bones, its eyes hollow and lifeless. Its body was covered in deep, festering wounds, and its mouth hung open in a silent scream. But the most terrifying part was the chains. thick. Rusted chains wrapped around the figure's wrists and ankles, holding it down, as if it had been trapped there for centuries. Maya let out a strangled gasp, clutching her chest. This is... this is where they kept him. Kept who? Jake asked, his voice shaking. The warden she whispered. He wasn't human. He... he controlled them. He controlled all of them. Travis took a step back, his face pale. We need to get out of here. But before they could move, the figure's eyes snapped open. 
the air grew heavy, thick with the stench of rot and death. The shadows surged forward, enveloping the group in a wave of darkness. And then, the warden spoke. The voice that filled the room wasn't human. It was deep, federal, and filled with centuries of malice and hatred. The very sound of it seemed to vibrate in their bones, sending waves of nausea through their bodies. You have trespassed where you do not belong, the warden growled, his hollow eyes fixing on the group. This is my domain. You will not leave. The chains around his body rattled as he shifted on the gurney, his form rising slightly. The shadows twisted and swirled around him, forming into the shapes of prisoners, twisted, deformed figures with faces contorted in agony. Mai backed away, her face pale with terror. He's not just a spirit. He's something else. Something evil. Travis tried to pull her toward the door, but the shadows were everywhere now, blocking their path. The air was thick with the smell of decay, and the whispers of the damned filled their ears. The warden let out a low, rumbling laugh, his skeletal hand reaching out toward them. You are mine now, just as they are. Suddenly, the temperature dropped even further, and the shadow surged forward, engulfing the group in darkness. Cold hands grabbed at their limbs, pulling them down, dragging them toward the floor. Travis struggled trying to fight them off, but it was like fighting smoke, his hands passed through the shadows, grasping at nothing. He could hear the others screaming, their voices filled with terror. We have to get out of here. Kara screamed, trying to push her way through the shadows. We can't let him trap us. Jake, still clutching his camera, backed up against the wall, his face twisted in fear. There's no way out, he whispered, his voice barely audible. We're trapped. Maya dropped to her knees, clutching her head. He's in my mind, she whispered, her voice trembling. I can hear him. He's telling me things. The warden's voice echoed through the room, filling the air with his dark, malevolent presence. You will join them. You will become one of the damned. The shadows pressed in from all sides, cold and suffocating. Travis could feel his body growing numb, the energy being drained from him as the darkness wrapped around him like a shroud. And then, just when it seemed like all hope was lost, Lucas let out a shout. I think I found something. He yelled, his voice filled with urgency. The others turned toward him, their hearts racing. Lucas had been frantically searching the walls, now he was pointing toward a small, rusted door in the far corner of the room. It leads to the tunnels. He shouted. We can get out that way. Without hesitation, the group scrambled toward the door, fighting their way through the shadows. The warden let out a furious roar, and the shadows surged forward trying to block their path. But Travis was faster. He reached the door first, throwing it open and ushering the others inside. Hurry! He shouted, holding the door open as the shadows closed in around them. One by one, they slipped through the door and into the darkness of the tunnels below. The tunnels beneath cold water were damp, dark, and claustrophobic. The air was thick with the smell of mildew and rot, and the only sound was the faint drip of water echoing through the passageways. Travis led the way, his flashlight flickering as he shined it down the narrow corridors. The others followed close behind, their breaths coming in short, panicked gasps. We need to keep moving, Travis said, his voice low but urgent. The warden. Whatever he is, he'll try to stop us. Maya, still shaken, nodded silently. She'd feel the warden's presence in the back of her mind, like a dark cloud hanging over her. She knew he wasn't done with them yet. The tunnels twisted and turned, leading them deeper into the earth. They had no idea where they were going, but it didn't matter. All they knew was that they had to keep moving. Suddenly, Jake stopped, his face pale. What is it? Kara asked, her voice trembling. Jake pointed to the floor. Look. The others followed his gaze, their hearts sinking as they saw what he was pointing at. The ground was littered with bones, human bones. Skulls, ribs, and femurs were scattered across the floor, their surfaces slick with moisture and decay. Some of the bones were old, almost disintegrating, while others were fresher, their surfaces still gleaming in the dim light. We're walking through a graveyard, Lucas whispered, his face pale. Mai's voice trembled as she spoke. These were the prisoners. They were never buried. They were thrown down here. The group pressed on, their fear growing with every step. The air grew colder, and the wall seemed to close in around them. The tunnel sloped downward, leading them deeper into the earth, and the sense of dread that had settled over them grew stronger. Suddenly, a low, rumbling growl echoed through the tunnel. Everyone froze. 
the growl grew louder, closer, and with it came the sound of shuffling footsteps, slow, deliberate footsteps, coming from the darkness behind them. Travis turned, his flashlight shaking as he pointed it down the tunnel. The shadows were moving again. The shadows swirled in the darkness, flickering like smoke, their forms shifting and twisting as they approached. The air grew colder, and the sound of the growl echoed off the walls, filling the tunnel with a sense of impending doom. We have to keep moving. Travis shouted, grabbing Maya's arm and pulling her forward. The group broke into a run, their footsteps echoing in the narrow tunnel as they fled from the approaching shadows. The ground sloped downward, and the tunnel grew narrower, forcing them to crouch as they moved. But the shadows were relentless. They moved faster now, their twisted forms flickering in the darkness, their whispers growing louder. You cannot escape. You will join us. Suddenly, the tunnel opened up into a large underground chamber. The ceiling was high, the walls slick with moisture, and the floor was littered with more bones. In the center of the chamber stood the warden. His skeletal form towered over them, his hollow eyes glowing with a malevolent light. The chains that bound him rattled as he moved, his voice filling the chamber with a dark, echoing growl. You thought you could escape, the warden hissed, but you belong to me now. Travis stepped forward, his hands trembling as he faced the warden. We're not staying here, he said, his voice firm despite his fear. We're leaving. The warden let out a low, rumbling laugh. You will never leave. You will become one of the damned, just like the others. The shadows surged forward, filling the chamber with their cold, suffocating presence. The walls seemed to close in, and the air grew thick with the stench of death and decay. Maya clutched her head, tears streaming down her face. He's in my mind, she whispered. He's controlling everything. Lucas, his face pale, looked down at the thermal camera in his hands. There's something. He muttered, his voice shaking. Something at the center of the room. Kara pointed to the far side of the chamber, where a small, rusted door stood half hidden behind a pile of bones. That's our way out. But before they could move, the warden's voice echoed through the chamber, his chains rattling as he raised a skeletal hand. You will never leave. The shadows surged forward, enveloping the group in darkness. Cold hands grabbed at their limbs, pulling them down, dragging them toward the floor. Travis struggled against the darkness, his heart pounding in his chest. He could feel the cold fingers wrapping around him, pulling him down into the earth. But he wasn't going to give up. With a surge of adrenaline, Travis pushed himself forward, breaking free from the shadows. He grabbed Maya's arm and pulled her toward the door, his breath coming in ragged gasps. Come on, he shouted, his voice filled with urgency. We're almost there. Lucas and Kara followed, their faces pale with fear as they fought their way through the shadows. The warden let out a furious roar, his chains rattling as he reached for them. But they were faster. One by one they slipped through the door and into the darkness beyond. The group emerged from the tunnels into the cold night air, their bodies bruised and exhausted, their minds reeling from the horrors they had witnessed. The forest was quiet, the moon casting a pale light over the landscape. The prison loomed behind them, a dark, hulking silhouette against the sky. Travis collapsed onto the ground, his breath coming in short, ragged gasps. Maya sat beside him, her hands trembling as she wiped the tears from her face. We made it, Kara whispered, her voice filled with disbelief. We actually made it. Lucas, still clutching the thermal camera, shook his head. We were lucky. We were so lucky. Jake, who had dropped his camera somewhere in the tunnels, stared at the prison in silence. He couldn't believe what he had seen, what he had filmed. The shadows, the warden, the spirits of the prisoners. It had all been real. We need to get out of here, Travis said, pulling himself to his feet. Before it comes back. They hurried toward the car, their hearts racing, their minds filled with the horrors they had escaped. As they drove away, leaving Coldwater Penitentiary behind them, none of them spoke. But the silence was heavy, filled with the knowledge that the prison wasn't just a place of history, it was a place of evil. A place where the damned still roamed, waiting for the next group of intruders to fall into their trap. And though they had escaped, they knew that cold water would always be there, waiting in the darkness, ready to claim more souls. Because some places never let you leave. Not completely. Months later, after the events of Coldwater Penitentiary, the team had disbanded. The trauma of that night had fractured their relationships, leaving them scattered and unwilling to speak of what had happened. But something lingered in their minds, something they couldn't forget. One evening, Travis received a package in the mail, 
Inside was a small, rusted key, along with a note that read, You escaped once, but cold water isn't finished with you yet. Travis stared at the note, his heart racing, the cold chill of fear creeping back into his bones. He knew it wasn't over. The prison was still waiting. And this time, it wouldn't let him leave.